Okay. Good afternoon, guys. This is Shivam Bhardwaj. My co-presenter is Vinay, and my team is Ashwat, Dhruv, and Chetan. We are from NYU and different colleges, and we today we'll be presenting innovative mass machine using vertical farming. So even after reading everything technical about this presentation, I was still confused how to start the presentation. I was very worried, and in car I actually realized that we should actually start it with the real motive why I am doing this. So um, it might be a jargon, but it's very necessary why I am presenting it today. So three months ago, I got a mail that I am accepted to NYU. So I talked to the seniors immediately and contacted him that what are the possibilities of the projects and everything at NYU. So he told me that we are currently working on a Mars mission. I was like, oh my god, this is, this is great. So what exactly is your mission? Then I got to know that they are actually planning a mission from scratch till the return of astronauts. So what our mission is? So motivation. It is a time that we have to realize that Earth is not safe anymore. Even though it might be today, but at any moment there can be asteroids Global warming is increasing in so many other aspects in which we have to discover what are the other possibilities of survival, except for our good planet. So then we got to know that the nearest planet, except for Venus, we have Mars for colonization. Why? Because almost the same gravity. There is an atmosphere which can be revamped. There is pressure which also can be adjusted, etc., and different other parameters that can be taken care of so that we have a proper colonization. So in today's presentation, we are basically talking about six of the USPs in our uh, particular mission that are what rocket we are using, what shuttle we are using, what is the trajectory of our mission, why vertical farming and how we are going to do this in space as well as to survival of the astronauts in, on, on the Mars. And next is entry, descent and landing. Last time it was Curiosity which landed. We humans are not like woodpeckers. Curiosity mission has so many vibrations in it that if human was there in that particular spacecraft, it would have banged his head on the spacecraft or even every possible security measure would have been fatal for him. So what are the different things in our particular entry descent launch? Also the last thing that what after reaching Mars. So I'll be uh, starting with the Hoffman transfer. Now we particularly don't have that enough thruster powers, even after Falcon, that we can directly go to Mars. So we are just uh, using a mathematical equation given by Hoffman, H-O-H -H man. So this basically what does is, it takes around six months to reach Mars. We are not going directly, we are taking an elliptical path in which the orbit is increasing with size and we are going to intercept Mars. We are going to intercept Mars like after six months. 1.5 years we'll be staying there until the next mission that is coming back on Earth. So overall uh, time duration of the mission is 900 days that uh, from the scratch, from the launch till the entry descent launch on our own planet. So next part is covered by Vinay, that what are the other astronomical aspects of this? Thank you, Shivam. So, so as I said, we are going to have a lot of transfers and our launching, launching is a criteria that we will end up starting our uh, journey. So these are the launch dates that we calculated based on the distance between Mars and the Earth. So whichever the date is feasible and whichever is sufficient enough to gain our uh, move our uh, move or move forward uh, to f proceed our research. So it's like you can launch on either 2017, 19, or 20, uh, 2022, 2024, or 2026, and it takes a travel time is almost around 212 days, approximately seven months. So landing date, uh, respective, if we la if we launch on 2017 December, we'll la uh, we will land on the Mars surface by July end of July 2018. So, okay, what, how are we going to each, each and every phase when we, after launching from Earth and reaching to the uh, Mars, each and everything is uh, uh, figured here like 
on 20, 2017 December, it starts from Earth, and we launch from there. 20% of journey is completed in the starting of 2018, and 50% uh, is at the end of, uh, in the middle of 2018. And uh, as we go forward, we'll reach, uh, we land on the Mars by 2018, July 31st, if we started in 2017. For the launch, we are, we are going to use SpaceX Falcon heavy spacecraft. This is equivalent to, uh, this size is almost equivalent to 737 uh, uh, jetliner, and each, each of these uh, boosters have nine uh, engines in it, total 27 engines to boost the spacecraft, and approximately uh, the, uh, it, the pricing of this is $90 million. Okay, this is how this is how the uh, after after boosters are off after the launch and boosters are off, we'll be end up with the space capsule. Uh, this this is the capsule in which our, our our major plan is like two astronauts will be traveling from Earth to the Mars, and in that they will perform uh, they will produce their uh, living. I mean, in order to live, they need to uh, have some food. So. They will produce it using vertical farming. Earlier, we had a concept of deep sleep mechanism to put the uh, astronauts into a long sleep for at least uh, uh, 200 days. I mean, they won't sleep for 200 days continuous, but uh, they will wake up every 30 days, and uh, uh, after 30 days, they will uh, they will adjust to the environment again and go to the deep sleep. That that was our last presentation in last convention, but. Major, uh, uh, what we saw as a drawback and wh why we opted for vertical farming in this presentation is like due to deep sleep mechanism, what happens is they will, uh, there are a lot of health issues they might be facing and they will be inactive for a long time. So we, we never know what happens if people are inactive more than 30 days. Let's say there is a research and there are few experiments going on uh, went earlier that stayed for 18 days max and they had some health effects. That's the reason we thought not to make the astronauts sleep during the whole beautiful journey towards the Mars. Instead, what we planned was like, we'll have a capsule, uh, in this capsule itself, we'll have an enhanced detachment and that will have vertical farming inside it. So this is inspired from Dragon Space Capsule, but uh, our uh, design is little more, uh, 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 this is just an inspiration from the Dragon Capsule. Our uh, our design is little more, and uh, that enhanced capsule will have a vertical farming section included in this. Hello. So basically, today I'll talk about why we are doing this vertical farming and why this is important for our particular mission. So uh, while coming from India, I just bought spices not vegetables, because I knew that vegetables and other stuff I'll be getting in US as well. So why this is important is that it considerably decreases the initial payload which we have to carry on our capsule. Like on earlier missions, we have to carry every food stuff, they get used and we just throw that waste in the space. So unnecessary, we have to carry so many things. Now, this is basically the concept, bioregenerative system. What happens is, in our ecology that, uh, on Earth, every nutrient, everything is governed by sun. That is fundamental source of energy. On this particular capsule as well, we have a considerable amount of solar, uh, solar energy and we can have a complete regenerative system using plants. The, uh, as you can see in the slide, that biomass is again, can be reused in some form or other in the scape, uh, space capsule. So what is the augmentation in that particular capsule is that this part is the normal Dragon spacecraft. We have added a vertical chamber for vertical farming. So look, if you look at the ceiling, you cannot even imagine that we can grow plants over that because that will fall on our head. But in space, since it's microgravity, we can have a chamber that is rotating such that the overall centrifugal force will be like 9.8 G. So we can have a farming-based area on the complete, tra uh, complete outer portion of that particular spacecraft. So why will this help? Vertical farming and uh, space farming is done in two modes. First, on the spacecraft, then after landing. So on the spacecraft and after landing has completely different technologies. So what happens in, when we are on the spacecraft? Since we have less or no gravity, 
we cannot use normal soil and everything on the uh, our system so what we are using is a tissue like structure which is currently being developed and there are startup which are working on it even nasa is being developing them so what we do is we um, just put that particular see uh, i can demonstrate you with the help of these are simply paper towels what they do is we can spread seeds on this the roots will automatically this is this is nature the roots will always go towards the gravity and the shoots will always come out to reduce the overall like water usage the overall overall water use, uh, usage minerals usage and everything what we do is we spray the minerals waters and other environment onto this our plant system so what happens is that we have to take our earth to mars so what we what are the parameters that are exclusive to earth that is everything can be regenerated on earth from minerals from water to everything so how we are doing this firstly we have to talk about what are the parameters for selection of those plants specifically on a space farming the fundamental uh, fundamental parameter is that it should be small because we are on a very tight space restriction next is high growth rate we cannot afford a plant that uh, like a uh, bamboo tree which takes at least uh, five years to grow it has to grow like in a month or so next thing is excellent germination we cannot it's the complete mission is zero error mission we cannot have even a single or two seeds wasted which we are carrying there next is that low natural microbial levels so one another good aspect of earth is that we know that even we have gut bacteria for digestion we are we are surrounded by bacteria even if we are in a 10 uh, 10 million uh, particle screen room then also we are having so many bacteria just imagine the situation in a spacecraft if these bacteria leak that will be devastating so what we have to do is we have to create a separate chamber this chamber is connected with the uh, spacecraft the dragon spacecraft and it is isolated from the main chamber so that whenever the person is entering whenever the astronaut is entering for uh, uh, like uh, growing and checking on the plants the thing is completely sealed so less or no bacteria are transferred into the main capsule next parameter we have to take lo a look on is that that should be easily picked and eaten what happens is even if we are growing something in space we cannot eat it directly that still have my uh, microbes on it for example in the f uh, iss have uh, two missions for vertical farming in the first mission even after like uh, the astronauts were asking them to eat that thing they were not allowed because they were first sent to earth and then checked for different levels of radiations different types of nutrition and different other things for example if you if you talk about almonds after uh, like in every 100 almond one almond is bitter from the same tree why because a slight amount of nutrients in the fundamental plant can differ considerably in the final produce so we have to regulate all these things now we uh, that particular plant not only should be edible but as i talked about bioregenerative structure so it has to uh, be efficient in regenerating whatever the fundamental needs of a human are on the planet so for that currently we have these options uh, it is red lettuce uh, which is grown in iss successfully and even eaten by the astronauts next they are working on dwarf tomatoes and the other uh, plants like this according to a research paper we still need 15 different type of plants for a complete diet system now what are the challenges as i've talked about low gravity pressure and different challenges that, that are currently being covered by uh, nasa and different societies is it done okay so next is entry descent launch now as i talked about in uh, this thing in the starting of the presentation this is the completely different aspect of a human uh, human based mission on plant uh, on mars last time uh, they were just sensors and uh, rovers on the device that was landing but this time we'll be having humans so we should have a certain mechanism which makes sure that there is no to and from uh, that that much to and from motion so that it is just inconvenient for the astronauts and not lethal so 
the first step will be that ent guided entry on the once we are into the orbital let's skip this once in uh, we are orbital it takes around 10 minutes to reach exactly the atmosphere of that particular uh, spacecraft uh, Ma uh, mars so next is edl phase then atmospheric entry then after uh, heating and deceleration, there are, last time we used a separate trolley mechanism in Curiosity rover, this time we are omitting that, because uh, in Curiosity rover, everything was governed by sensors, and it was a gap of seven minutes multiplied by two that we, go, uh, we got a signal from. So everything was autonomous. Now we have humans to control everything. So we, are om we can omit so many other sensors to have this guided uh, EDL phase. And last, when we touch down, the scene entirely changes. We were having a proper farming mechanism f uh, to develop things in space, but right now we're in a gravity of one third of Earth. So we have a different story here. Thank you. So as he said, uh, complete scenario of vertical farming changes when we compare if vertical farming is done in space, that's a different aspect. It has uh, some so no gravity at all to support the planned shoot system or root system. But when it comes to the, when we land on the Mars and uh, we have at least, not like zero gravity on the space, we have at least one third gravity when compared to Earth. And uh, so on the Mars, vert vertical farming will have a lot of different challenges and uh, these are the details that we are going to incorporate in, uh, uh, in our paper as well and uh, we, what what kind of uh, how safe is to con consume that uh, pr produce that they had on uh, Mars and uh, how how are we going to limit our payload and what are different advantages when compared to uh, carrying our own food to the Mars or sustaining there or vertical or using or producing plants using vertical farming in there uh, so we will have a s different environment setup. Uh, on the Mars surface to have vertical farming implemented. We'll have pro production food production there, and uh, these plants that we uh, grow there helps to generate oxygen, and they are useful to grow herbs just in case some, some sort of bi uh, any uh, infection or something happens to the astronauts. They can use those herbs to uh, heal themselves, and we can use the recycled waste to uh, provide nutrients or uh, uh, provide fertilizers to the plants on the Mars surface. So these are the, uh, these are the different components that used in vertical farming. Uh, these, uh, instead of using sunlight, because sunlight, uh, though, on, while going towards the Mars, we'll have, during the space voyage, there is no sunlight, we will be uh, using vertical farming with, with the help of LED lights. It, in the same way, though we have sunlight on Mars, uh, we, cannot, we cannot use those sunlight to uh, generate photo photosynthesis on on those plants because uh, the, uh, due to radiation. So instead of instead we'll use that sun and uh, solar energy and we will generate uh, uh, solar. Uh, we'll use that solar energy to generate energy for the LED system and this LED system uh, gi uh, gives required photo photosynthesis process for uh, plant growth. This is how a setup looks like. As he demonstrated, we we just we don't need a soil there because. Uh, Mars soil is not useful to grow plants, so we are, we are going to use uh, semi-permeable membranes uh, and root, because there is a gravity system in the, on the Mars, so we'll have roots going down, li like otherwise in the space, it, it, uh, it, because of some system and if we can provide good amount of LED uh, light towards the uh, shoot, it grows towards the top and root goes towards the down, that gives a production uh, in the required rate. So these are the different dimensions uh, of a, a, a single plant or a single chamber that we use for vertical farming. And uh, when compared to space, vertical farming on the Mars will have a different, uh, microbiology in, uh, in, on the Mars surface is completely different. And as I mentioned about the li LED lights, these are the different uh, uh, spe uh, specifications for that. And they are preserved in minus 80 degrees Celsius. 
what kind of plants as he mentioned we can we are going to we can use multiple uh, produce we can use different kinds of plants to grow there like beans or tomatoes or uh, lettuce cabbage strawberries uh, and these are glow, uh, at least it takes around 18 days sometimes it might take around 25 days to harvest and get the first produce and this apart from vertical farming uh, apart from produce we get from vertical farming we can have uh, uh, this acts as a horticulture, uh, horticulture therapy for the astronauts that gives a mind relief to the astronauts and they can see another growth right in front of them and they can have a feel and that will keep the astronauts very active and uh, stressless. So this is how the chamber or uh, a setup of vertical farming looks like and as uh, there will be some germs that are involved even though we produce it in a very uh, sophisticated environment. So we can use different kinds of sensors to guide and uh, we, we can use urn water sensors to give certain amount of water, uh, certain amount of water and we can reduce, uh, dif we can use different sensors to uh, uh, prevent different germs on the plants and we can use ProSan uh, wipes, those are used by NASA and produced few years ago. Uh, we can use that to wipe off the food that we uh, produce there and we can, we can th th that will be safe to astronauts to eat. So uh, this is how we can uh, cycle through the process of vertical farming on the Mars. Uh, as I said, they, uh, as you saw the launch dates and Falcon uh, launch from Earth, we, we are going to send two Falcon spacecrafts and uh, w one provides only vertical farming setup and uh, astronauts will be in there and another uh, spacecraft is going to have uh, all the required, let's say after they go there, they might need mobility to uh, move from one place to another. They, they can generate fuel from uh, Mars environment and they can set up a chamber like this. Uh, and these, these kind of setup are carried in another Falcon uh, spacecraft. This is the vehicle I'm talking about, if just in case if they want to move from one place to another or investigate different soils on the marsh. After the launch date, these are the, uh, these are the dates that they can use to uh, return to the Earth. That's all. Thank you. So for the bioregenerative life support system, I'm assuming you're using composting microbes to convert the um, waste yeah. into fertilizer. Yeah, yes. And then you would be sterilizing that before using that as a hydroponic solution for the plants? Yes. Um, so my question is, like in organic um, gardening on Earth, sometimes people would take that fertilizer solution that's unsterilized and they'd spray it on the surface of the plants, creating like a probiotic sort of solution that excludes pathogens. Is there mm. a reason you guys would not want to do that? See, well, it depends how the exact approach is yet to be studied. Reason being because none of the approach is completely perfect till now. If uh, right now we are just ch working on what other plants are we can produce, not like how we can completely annihilate the bacteria. Can I ask one more question? Yeah, sure. Do you think that the sterility of the plants might affect their, the bioavailability of the nutrients once they reach Exactly, the they do. There are so many factors that uh, makes the plant unfit for, uh, for eating. Even if they taste good, they might not have the proper nutrition or they might even be poisonous. So we have to study a lot about the exact things, uh, like exact outcome of those particular plants. And we have to wait like six months for every produce. So that is taking a lot of time. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, uh, two things. Um, it, this is built around the uh, the Dragon spacecraft, which uh, has a crew of two or something. So, um, uh, how dependent is it on two people doing a 200-day mission outbound and then a year and a half on the surface and then a 200-day mission inbound? Mm -hmm. Two people doing that, and then a second uh, separate thing: if they're growing all this on the way there, and then they're going to try to uh, atmospherically decelerate it and then have it you know, a garden ready to go and, and plop in place and everything, that seems like a lot of logistical problems for re-entry or for uh, Martian entry. 
would it not make sense to kind of send a, a seed packet or you know all the stuff and then get it there and then go into the, uh, vertical yeah. farming or am I totally missing the point? The fundamental difference in this particular mission is that we are not just going there. We are going to stay for some time and there is a re-entry uh, re as well to Earth. So we are sending two aircraft simultaneously. One is just for the uh, carrying people and the space farming. Second one is the carrying the thrusters that will make uh, that like uh, which can make the astronauts come back from Mars as well as uh, equipments for the uh, farming on Mars. So we are having two separate aircrafts for this particular mission. If you decided. Yeah to just stay there rather than come back and save all that fuel and boosters for coming back? Could this system be long-term sustainable and, and self-seeding and stuff? See, it system can be sustainable, but our human bodies are not. What happens is in uh, space, our bone density is decreased considerably. Like in six months or something, we'll be aging like 70 years or 80. So we cannot stay there for long until unless we figure out a way to like keep on, pr uh, prolong our bone density and other parameters. Yes, it will be sustainable. This is li like a re uh, remission. We two people will go there, set up something. Then again, we will be having a mission after next uh, one month or two. This is the way we are going to colonize that particular area. It's not like a, pers a particular person can just uh, stay there forever because that is not uh, human bodies are made up for that yet. Uh, it's <laughs> also like uh, uh, bringing the two humans back to the earth. We have to go through a lot of medical procedures. What ha what really happened to them in mass? And we have to figure out some solutions so that we can keep on sending people so that we that we can colonize in like in short time. The reason for using Falcon Heavy was this only because Falcon Heavy we have reusable boosters. So wh when the uh, Falcon Heavy gets out of the atmosphere of Earth, it uh, the boosters land back to the Earth. So we have re reusability of boosters. So it saves costs, so that we can have multiple missions to Mars. From because one mission cannot just uh, be suffice to. From New York to California, we came into A320. That is a cost of 90 million. Just imagine, and this whole yeah. mission is also having a cost of that. So we so want we to have sustainable things, so that people can go there and return back. Not completely. Right now, we are not working on their uh, prolongability of their particular stay. We just wanted a mission that can be uh, reused, like again and again. Last question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.